Hello, everybody, and welcome to Programming with Ruby, Episode 3, Getting Help and Tools. I'm your presenter, Tyler. As always, this is brought to you by manwithcode.com. So, covered in this episode, I'll be going over how to get help. If you ever get stuck while using Ruby, your first stop should be Google. Uh, this, to some, this may be obvious, but some people still don't use Google for whatever reason that is. I'm going to show you how to use it. It's really easy. Don't worry. Your next stop should be Ruby's documentation if Google did not help. Then I will be showing you forums and mailing lists where you can ask for help or help others. Also, I will be showing you some blogs by Ruby developers. On the tools side. I will be showing you some good text editors and a few IDEs, Integrated Development Environments is what that stands for. Just as a side note, I will be showing you many websites today, but don't worry, all links are in the description, so let's get started. Okay, so, our first stop will be Google, the google.com, G-O-O-G-L-E dot com. And Let's just say I need to know about some particular facet of Ruby, and I don't know, say I'm looking for Ruby Lambdas. You know, I just need to know how they work. Oh, whoops, I spelled that wrong. Just need to know how they work, need some information on them, whatever. I do that, I hit enter, and I get this list. This list of all these sites and articles and everything have to do with Ruby Lambdas. And I'm going to hit the top one, and, well, let's see, this looks pretty pretty informative. Looks like it'll show me how to use this, uh, these Ruby Lambdas. Um, so, yeah, and this is how you can find stuff, but let's just say that didn't work. For whatever reason, let's go look at the official Ruby documentation. And this is found at ruby-doc.org, rubydoc.org. Um, and this is the official Ruby documentation, this, you know, I don't know how else to describe it. Okay, so first up here, it's got some articles and tutorials and stuff. We don't want those. We want the section called Core API. Right here, all of this. Um, and we are using 1.8.6 on some versions, 0.7 on mine. Uh, so you're going to want this one. If you you need information on the standard libraries that come with Ruby, you'll want this one. Let's just go over here, click this link, and let's look for lambdas again. And I'm going to hit Control F, which is my browser's find function. It's standard across all the browsers. And I'm going to hit Enter. So I've typed in Lambda right there. And um, there's what looks like what I want. And here's some information on there. Now this is pretty sparse. It doesn't tell me too much what about what it is. I mean, it's got a little bit of the usage up here, but not much. But on other things, it's much more informative so and should help you a whole lot more. Um, so let's say you you've done a Google search and you've looked through the documentation and nothing has helped you so far what do you do you ask a person of course humans you can ask questions to them they respond it's great it's not like talking to a computer um, so this is where the forums come in um, there are two forums that are, I like uh, there's rubyforum.com r-u-b-y-f-o-r-u-m.com uh, I believe this is the most popular one there are a large amount of categories in here that you can post in and ask questions and an actual person should get back to you if they know the answer not uh, also be sure you know give back a answer questions you, uh, you know the answer to uh, next also is rubyforums.com uh, this is a little less popular and seems to be more focused on Ruby on Rails but it's still it's still pretty good um, now, for general tips and news about Ruby, you probably don't want to go Google searching for that. Um, you may be interested in some blogs about Ruby. To find some, let's go to rubylang.org, r-u-b-y-l-a-n-g.org. Uh, we're going to want to click on the community link, scroll down here to web blogs about Ruby. And here's some aggregators, which is stuff that's just been written about Ruby is what they're usually showing. Here's some popular blogs right there. So subscribe to those, visit them often, whatever. And keep you up to date and give you some general tips. Um, okay. So hopefully by now, if you've 
have some problem or need to know about something, all these resources I've shown you should be able to help you. Now we're going to move on to tools. First step, text editors. So the first text editor up is Notepad++. It is for Windows. It's meant to be a replacement for Notepad and it is far, far much better than the standard notepad that comes with Windows. It's excellent. It's what I use when I'm on Windows. Uh, check it out. Uh, Scintilla, or no, sorry, Skype, which is based on Scintilla, uh, I believe does a little bit more than just Ruby. Some other languages, uh, I don't like it too, too much, but it's a lot better than Notepad. Um, then there's JEdit, which is Java based so it runs just about everywhere Java runs. It's uh pretty good. Pretty good. Got some good plugins and stuff. Uh so yeah, then there's TextMate for the Macintosh. It's about fifty five dollars. It's about what everybody on uh OS X uses and and I don't know how they all afford it, but they seem to, all of them. Uh, it's very nice. I don't have a uh, Mac, so I can't try it out personally, but that's what I've heard from everyone, so I'm just going to go on that. Uh, if you're still liking that featureless text editor like Notepad, the, the editors I've showed you are much, much better. You should really use them instead. Uh, you'll see this as you write more code, and you'll be like, oh, why didn't I listen to him? Uh, so get these if you... Even if you're saying, no, I don't want to, get them. Okay, next we're moving on to integrated development environments. The first, my favorite, is NetBeans. Uh, does a lot of languages. It was originally made for Java, but it does Ruby, C, C++ now, and some other languages. Um, check it out. It's pretty good. Next is Aptana. There's uh, their product, RadRails, uh, which is for Ruby, and um, more specifically Ruby on Rails, but it does just plain old Ruby pretty good. Uh, pretty well, I mean. And uh, when I used it originally a while ago, it was way buggy. I didn't like it. It was freezing and crashing all the time. But some people have been saying some good things about it, so check it out. Uh, free free ride is another one. Uh, pretty popular. Check it out. Uh, I don't like it. Doesn't look very good. But hey. Um, next is Genie. It's for Linux. It's GTK based. Uh, it's pretty good. It does a lot of languages, but it's kind of like overkill if for really small things and not enough features for larger things that uh, IDEs like NetBeans has, so I don't know, I'm kind of in the middle on this one, I don't really know what what to think. Um, so these are all very good, but because you are currently learning, that's why I assume you're watching this series. Uh, I recommend you s just stick with one of the text editors I showed you. When you move on to bigger and better projects, use an IDE, but not now. Uh, they can be very, very useful when you do, though. Okay, now we've come to the end. I'm very, very sorry. I hope it helped you. If you need any help, if you have questions or comments, leave a comment below in the little comment box, or email me at tyler at manwithcode.com. And hey, before you go, you may have realized somewhere along the line that I'm doing these videos for free. You're learning for free. Uh, and, you know, I still it's still costing me money to keep the site up and everything. So if you'd please donate, it, I'd be very grateful. Uh, so, yeah, please donate. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.